Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 189 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and don't say I don't do anything for you cunts because I'm currently recording the episode in the back of a fucking motorhome. And the only thing separating me from the other three people in the fucking motorhome is a bit of cloth. So, you know, congratulations to you, but also fuck everyone in my motorhome. And that's your fault, isn't it? You bunch of disrespectful cunts. Every time I miss an episode, I get 100,000 comments. Spirit Sundays, not Spirit Sunday. Look, the days of missing episodes are over, ladies and gentlemen. Those days are fucking over. And by over, I mean I haven't missed an episode for two weeks. So I can't remember the last time I, why I would even think about missing an episode, guys. I'm fucking here. I'm hot and wet, right? That sounds like something you might hear at the start of a Pornhub video. You know, the one with the stepsister. Like, oh, what are you doing? Help me, brother. I'm hot and wet. But it's also the start of this podcast because... Currently, we're in Airlie Beach, and it's hot, but it also, it's quite wet. No stepsisters around uh, fucking each other. That's more of a Tasmania vibe, but it is quite hot and wet. It's a really nice place here. It's summer. Um, is it summer? I don't know. It's hot, and it's wet. That's what it is. I've never been in a place that's that's like so hot but it's just raining for 24 hours. From the minute I woke up today, it's been raining and it hasn't stopped. And apparently it's going to be that for the next three days. And you know why that's good, right, for me? That's good for me because that means no one else wants to go to the beach. And that's I've hit the jackpot, ladies and gentlemen, right? I'm here in the perfect beach town in what would be the best perfect weather to go and relax on the beach, except for the fact it has been raining for 24 hours and will continue to rain for 24 hours for the next three days. I am blessed, ladies and gentlemen. I I prayed for that rain and I got what I wanted, you know? I'm putting out bad vibes into the universe and that's what I'm getting back. Bad vibes raining on everyone else's holiday and that suits me just fine. I'm sitting here wearing jeans in a motorhome and I'm comfortable as fuck. I had to give up on the jeans, man. I had to. And you know what? I didn't break my promise. I said that I was going to wear jeans till 2020. It was jeans all 2019. In fact, it wasn't even supposed to be for the whole year. It was a dumb joke on our stupid radio show. I said I was going to wear jeans all summer. And then it was so funny that I thought, oh, well, I'll just do it all year. And I sat through bushfire season in my fucking jeans. And then I got to northern Queensland. And I was like, dude, if I don't take my jeans off, I'm going to become racist. That's how hot I was. Like, I was so hot that I was going to be like, you know what? Pauline Hanson started to make a lot of sense, you know? Like, I think she knows what, what's going on. I think she knows something that these other people don't. We need to stop these boats. That's what being hot all day does to you. It just makes you go, I'm hot. Why should we let immigrants in? I'm fucking boiling. I'm really sweaty. I hate Asian people. That's how it works. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I bet Asian people are so racist. Not all Asians, just the ones that that work in sweatshops because they're fucking so sweaty all the time. They're like make sitting there making a baby Yoda doll and they're like, oh, I fucking hate Japanese people. You know, that's Chinese because everything's made in China or everything used to be made in China, but now they're all dead because of the coronavirus. The warehouse, not the people. They're still alive and kicking. And by that, I mean they're trying to kick down the doors of their own homes because the government won't let them out of their fucking apartment buildings. Have you seen that shit? Hong Kong protests, they are over. That shit ended quick, huh? As soon as coronavirus came over, they were like, all right, you know, a few of you guys are sneezing, so we have to take away your civil liberties. Like, I've got a sore throat. All right, well, I'm going to have to lock up your whole family and disappear a few cousins. I'm pretty sure it's just a cold. Oh, sorry, you can't use the internet anymore. It's why? For your own safety. Really? This kind of feels like uh, authoritarian dictatorship. No, no, no. This is because you're sick. Hey, how come where well, I got sick just after you put in uh, one of those really big virus and disease control centers? Does that have anything to do with it? No, no, no. It was the wet market, right? You guys were eating too many different kinds of fish and now you're fucked. I don't know, man. Do you guys believe that conspiracy? It starts to add up, doesn't it? Hong Kong protests start. They can't quell the protests. All of a sudden, some new disease control center 
sets up. I read somewhere, and look, I'm not agreeing with any of this, and I also haven't researched any of it, but I have read a lot of headlines of tweets that other people have sent and then not clicked on the article. So what I'm saying here, guys, is I know 30% of the story and I remember 15% of what I've read. So really what you're getting here is me trying to give you 15% of the story, but also trying to make it funny. So you guys are going to walk away from this with about 3% of the story. But fuck, we're going to have fun on the along the way, aren't we? Um, I saw fucking... Again... I haven't researched this, and I'm, I'm some long cunt wearing jeans at, in a motorhome. So, you know, take, take, take it with a grain of salt, yeah? Don't trust me, because I don't trust me. I'll say something, and I'll be like, fuck, that sounds like bullshit, and then I'll just keep going. You ever do that? I feel like that happens. I do that so much less, but when I was younger, when I was like 19, 20... I used to just say shit and my own brain would go, I think you're lying to these people. And I would just keep going. And then I realized, I think I'm lying a lot. And then I stopped doing it. Except an hour every Sunday. And I just fucking lie to you cunts. <laughs> Guys, in the, in the heavy amount of research that I've done, right? Me, a very long Australian comedian, who very recently sold about... Uh, 43 tickets in Port Macquarie, right? So I'm a very trusted source. Yeah, I've got a very val- I've got a very large community that values my opinion so much. 43 tickets in Port Macquarie had to boot out a woman because she was so offended, right? And I know what is really happening with the coronavirus situation. China did it. I have been looking up. I actually have been researching it a lot because I've been doing. I've got a bi-monthly bull episode coming out about it. It's just like eleven minutes. I'm like, oh, I'll pre-record a bi-monthly bull episode and then I'll edit it while I'm on the road. And then that just didn't happen. So now I'm going to put out that coronavirus video and it's going to be like fucking two, three weeks too late. But that's how it goes. Um, I yeah, I read like this disease control center or whatever the fuck it's called recently set up in Wuhan and they patented some new virus. And then a few weeks later, it just gets out and then they go, Oh, it's cause you guys were eating a lot of bat. And then that, you know, that, that satisfied Twitter for a while that kept those memes going, you know, everybody posting videos of cunts eating bat. So for, it was, you know, you know what? Twitter it made Twitter really interesting for about a whole week because every day I would log on and just see some Chinese guy eating something that he shouldn't. You know, and I I felt scrolling through Twitter during the peak of the coronavirus memes, it felt like, you know, when your dog is in the backyard and he has something in his mouth and he's eating something, and you're like, hey, what are you doing? Spit that out. That's what I felt. Like every time I saw some Chinese guy just tucking into a disgusting looking meal with some unique animal that's probably endangered. I'm like, hey, spit it out. Uh, What do you got in your mouth? Stop that. It's going to give you a virus. That's how I felt. I spit that out of your mouth, Wong. (laughs) That's a bat. That's not food. Hey, you're not supposed to feed tadpoles to a toddler. Now, that sounds racist, but I, that's the video that I saw of some chick just fucking spoon, feed, spoon feeding her son, toddler, like just live tadpoles and him just downing it like it was Cheerios. That's some great. That's awesome. That kid's going to grow up and he's going to have fucking superpowers or he won't grow up at all. <laughs> you know, like that kid... If you grow up eating tadpoles for breakfast, which, let's be honest, they must have zero nutritional value and they would be hard as fuck to catch. So they must be doing something else, you know? Like, that's not... You don't eat 16 tadpoles and be like, oh, I'm stuffed, you know? That's not making you full. So there's got to be some kind of Chinese medicine aspect to that. And I reckon, right, if you grew up in China, and you you just grew up on fucking tadpoles, surely when you grow up, you just have the best vertical jump of all time. You can just jump so fucking high. You've been smashing tadpoles since you were zero. 
Dude, you can slam dunk anything. I mean, end of the day, a black guy is still going to absolutely fucking demolish you. But for a Chinese guy, pretty good vertical. Still probably should have been a doctor, but fuck, that guy can dunk. <laughs> Guys, I, I want to say that the, the, the world is a better place now, right? That's what I'm saying, you know? The Hong Kong protests are over. Chinese citizens can't leave their house and if they don't have family members sending them money, they're fucked, you know? And also their internet is censored, so it's not like you can, you can just get your sister to jump up on OnlyFans and start feeding the family, you know? Like, get to work. You ever think about that? Do you, you do, With the prevalence of OnlyFans and how many chicks are selling nudes and making bank, and a lot of them are, are just not, like, they don't look like porn stars, they just look like regular chicks, like you'd see her at the supermarket and be like, yeah, I'd have sex with her, but I wouldn't tell my friends. You know, like, there's a lot of girls like that just making fucking bank on OnlyFans. Like, yeah, you know, I would, I'd take her out on a date, but I, I wouldn't, you know, if I matched her on Tinder, I wouldn't screenshot it and show my friend and be like, look at this, you know? Like, I'm sure she's nice and she's got a good personality, but, like, you know, I wouldn't be like, F uh, fuck it, I, I did that. I conquered that chick, you know? You'd just be like, oh, yeah, that'll be a good six minutes, you know? Like, so many of those chicks are making fucking bank on OnlyFans. That's like a whole new industry. Girls, if you listen to this, you know? You don't like your job? You don't want to wake up in the morning. You don't want to fucking go to work. Fuck it. You don't even have to go to the gym and work out and have a have a sick rig to do OnlyFans. You just need to like have you need to have seven thousand followers on Twitter, and then go, hey guys, I just started an OnlyFans, and you don't even have to show your nipples. There are so many Instagram models out there that already show everything except Areola. They start OnlyFans and all you're going to see is like a, like another kind of photo that they already post. And those chicks are making fucking thousands of dollars a month. I'm going to do it. I'm going to start up an OnlyFans, man. I'm going to start up an OnlyFans and I'm just going to post pictures of my legs. You know there are some gay dudes out there who would be so fucking into that. Tallguysfree.com shut down. That's the gap in the market I'm going to fill. I saw some chick start an OnlyFans. And someone's like, what kind of content do you post on there? And she just went, oh, just exclusive selfies that I don't post anywhere else. Fucking sign me up, bro. Dude, $7 a month to see a nice smile? I'm fucking in. I'm sold. $7 a month to see some some chick laying down on her bed on her front, smiling, wearing glasses after she just finished her Twitch stream and probably smells like a, a three-day-old dead kitten because she's so fucking sweaty from pretending to give a fuck about the game she's playing. Sign me up. I'm sold. I love that shit. Just seeing, like, random chicks signing up to OnlyFans. And I'm not knocking it, you know? That's... <laughs> that's the dream. Isn't it? That's it. That's it. That's the, that, you know, if you can make money out of not posting nudes as a woman, you've made it. I'm not saying that's, I'm definitely not saying that's the only thing that a woman can do or the only way a woman can make it. But, you know, chicks can make it in other ways, you know? You can answer that for yourself. You can fill in those blanks. I don't need to. There are so many ways. For women to rise to the top in an industry and absolutely kill it, I don't even need to say them. I'm sure you can think of many of them. But if a chick can make three grand a month not posting nudes, just chucking up an exclusive fucking bikini picture that she would go to the beach in anyway and probably end up on some cunt story, she's made it.
and and I am inspired by it. You know what starting an OnlyFans account and not posting nudes is like? That would be like you buying tickets to my comedy show and I'm there. Don't get me wrong. I am there. It's my show, right? You've paid $35 to see me, a stand-up comedian. You've come to a stand-up comedian show. You've paid your money, right? You Fuck it. You might even get the T-shirt afterwards. You brought an extra fucking 30 bucks to get the T-shirt. That's how excited you are to see this show. You're like, fuck it. I'm going to get the shirt and everything. And then you sit down in your seats after paying to see a comedy show. And then I get up there. And I just show you my dick. And I don't tell any jokes. You just don't get what you thought you were going to get. You're like, fuck, I can't wait. I've paid money to see an hour of jokes. And then I get up there completely silent. I don't even say hello. I walk on stage and I just show you my dick. Not erect, like like soft. I just, I just get, I unzip my jeans and I pull it out and I hold it in my palm, right? I, I hold my nuts and my dick is resting on top of my nutsack and I just show it. And I show you the left and the right and then underneath it and then on the top and then I get off 40 seconds and you paid $35 to see a comedy show but all you got was my ball bag. That's what that's like. You just don't get what you thought you were going to get. And I didn't promise that I was going to give you a comedy show. I just said, hey, guys, tickets to my show are on sale now. Go get it if you want to see some more exclusive content. I never said I was going to tell you jokes. They never said they were going to show you nudes. All they promised was exclusive content. And boy, that's what you got. It wasn't what you thought you were going to get, but fuck it. You paid for it. No refunds. That's making it. And with that said, guys, loosespears.com slash gigs to get your tickets. Melbourne Comedy Festival on sale now. Uh, the regional tour is almost over as well. Uh, we're going to Cairns and we're going to somewhere else. Townsville. Townsville. Thank you, Luke. Luke is listening to the whole podcast. How am I going so far? What did you think of the nut bit? Uh, I'm not really listening. He's not really listening. Guys, it was great. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you, dude. Uh Anyway, loosespears.com slash gigs, grab your tickets. Um, also, uh, I'm going to talk about it more in depth uh, when I get back in the studio and I can actually probably think about it. But Spears vs. America, my TV pilot, uh, pre-orders are open now and it releases on the 27th of March. It is the best uh, TV, like film, stunt, vox pop, news hoax thing I've ever done. It is... Uh, really really great it's a tv pilot think of it as episode zero right you got episode zero and then you got episode one think of it as that it's the proof of concept it is fucking incredible loosespears.com slash watch to get it pre-order that shit if it's already out go and get it go and watch it it's my best work it's really great all of the money we raise through that we're going to put towards filming an entire season um and that's what I want to do. I'm going to talk about it more in depth next episode um, of the podcast because I'm not, I'm in a fucking motor home, all right? But go and get that shit. We also have exclusive merch that uh, I'm pretty sure is only available during the pre order period. I will have to double check, but I think that's the go, all right? Go and get that shit and your tickets and all that stuff, all right? Cunts, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the world is fixed. All of the problems that we've been facing as a species have been fixed, ladies and gentlemen. And you know who saved us? It wasn't the President of the United States. It wasn't NATO. It wasn't the UN, right? It wasn't the whatever the fuck Britain checked out of, Brexit, you know? Oh, we can't Brexit if if Britain exits the fucking European Union. Everything's going to collapse. Britain exits. Oh, Nothing happened. It's just like Donald Trump getting elected. Oh, fuck. A bunch of numbers changed, but it didn't actually affect anyone. And what by anyone, I mean white people. It didn't affect any white people, did it? And who's, who's Britain full of? White cunts. All right. So, shush. You got nothing to worry about, right? <laughs> Especially if you're a white woman. But guys, the world's a better place. And you know who fixed it? Disney. As we all know, Disney 
is one of the most altruistic companies in the world. They fix global warming recently. I'm sure they put a tweet out about that. They fixed it, you know. They uh, stopped the child labor issue, and that issue was there weren't enough children working, and they fixed that shit by creating Baby Yoda to sell plush dolls to fucking adult virgins who have 16 OnlyFans subscriptions and can't pay rent, right? And now Disney has fixed homophobia, ladies and gentlemen. The company has announced its first openly LGBT character. Their first ever gay character in a Disney film. If you disregard all of the other fucking times they've announced their first ever gay character, is it just me or is it every fucking six weeks Disney announces their first ever gay character? Haven't we had 35,000 of those by now? Was it in fucking uh, Finding Dory there was like a lesbian fish couple? Which is very ironic because that's what, uh, that is, you know, the smell of fish is very familiar to lesbian couples, isn't it? So that makes a lot of sense. Wasn't that like their first one? And then before that, wasn't Elsa's heavily implied to be gay? Let it go. I love puss. Isn't that what that was? That whole fucking song was about, I am a... (laughs) I love vagina. Wasn't that what that song was about? I don't know. I didn't see the film, but that's what Twitter thought. I know those two fish were gay. And also, wasn't there... There was... I saw it, a fucking gay kiss in Star Wars. I mean, that's pretty fucking openly gay. Like, is... Like, if if that... If two women kissing on the mouth isn't openly gay, I don't know what the fuck is. Fellas, be honest. Is it gay to kiss another man on the mouth? Yes! That's gay as fuck. That's pretty open about it. That's fucking homosexual. Two dudes kissing on the mouth? Pretty sure that's openly gay. Like what? Did I miss the part in Star Wars where two women kissed, looked at the camera and said, We're not gay. We love dick. Please do not censor this film in China. Dude, that kiss was so openly gay that they censored it in Singapore. Pretty fucking gay, don't you think? Right? If it wasn't gay, I think that would have gone in the fucking final cut of Singapore. But no, they hate gays over there, so they cut it from the film. But guys, despite all of the other, I guess, closeted gay characters that Disney has put out, it's time for their first openly gay character for at least the next six weeks, and then they'll announce another one, right? Pixar's... Oh, I'm an idiot. (laughs) Is Pixar Disney? No, it's not. Uh, Guys, I'm a fucking idiot. Wait, does Disney own Pixar? Guys, let me Google something for the first time in my life. Does Disney own... Pixar. Let's be honest, Disney probably owns the kids that make Pixar's merch, so same shit, right? Parent company. Walt Disney Studios, fuck yeah, I'm still correct. We still got that Instagram clip. Let's go. I'm fucking on it today, guys, right? Pixar's Onward has a lesbian character. Openly lesbian, right? And by openly lesbian, I'm sure what they really mean is there's probably 7 to 14 seconds of dialogue where they vaguely reference their girlfriend, and then that's it. Dude, I I will honestly, I will eat my fucking hat if they show these two characters holding hands. And I fucking love, right? that their first ever openly lesbian characters, other than the the other 36,000 of them, is the ugliest looking troll I've ever seen. It's like a one-eyed troll with a giant horn on her head, and if it couldn't get any more stereotypical, she's also a cop. Like, why can't we just make the first lesbian character a baker with huge tits? You know, like, try to be less obvious about it, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, we'll put in a gay character, but only if they're an incredibly massive stereotype, because otherwise, you know, China won't get it. So I'm reading this article. Onward, a new fantasy Pixar film about young elves 
who discover a wizard staff features a lesbian character. Hang on. A Pixar film about young elves who discover a wizard staff. Bro, every character in that film's fucking gay as. A bunch of elves fawning over a wizard staff? I don't think you can get gayer than that. I think the lesbian character is less gay than the other elves that are just trying to chase some wizard's hard on. Where are we? Okay. However, Slate has confirmed that Spectre, must be the lesbian character, is indeed queer in Onward which devotes a line of casual dialogue to the revelation. Bro, what did I fucking say? Seven seconds of lesbian dialogue and no, not even hand-holding. I bet... Okay, here's the dialogue. My girlfriend's daughter got me pulling my hair out. And that's it. Dude, is that openly gay? Like... Seven seconds of dialogue where a female character says, my girlfriend. Is that really a step forward or is that just Disney doing the absolute bare minimum to get a few positive tweets while also not putting a gay character in so they can fucking cater to all of these countries that would rather chuck a gay off a roof than put him in a movie? I think that shit's gross. It's like, dude, if you're going to make a children's film with a gay character, at least make them have a scissoring scene, you know? Like, go balls deep. Commit to the bit. Show me some clit on clit. That's what it should be. Commit to the bit. Show me some clit. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Anyway, they're definitely not the first openly gay character that a Disney Pixar film has put in. If you want to talk about Disney's first openly gay character, bro, Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc. is gay as fuck. (laughs) You couldn't get any gayer than Mike Wazowski. That guy is built to suck cock. (laughs) That guy's just like a giant cock-sucking monster. I'm Mike Wazowski. Let me on your cock. He's, He's hanging around Sully... And they, they're going around with a child that is definitely not theirs. That's gay as fuck, bro. What do you think they're doing? Every time the you know, every time the fucking camera looks away, Mike Wazowski just ends up as Sully's underwear. Absolutely. I've never seen a monster more suited to deep throating a hairy monster than Mike Wazowski running around with someone else's like mixed race kid. That's gay as fuck. So, yeah, guys, what I'm saying is Disney has fixed all of the problems in the world. What is it with all of these evil conglomerates, like, pretending they're not evil? Like, they're just obscuring their evil acts with the the rainbow flag. Oh, we might be investing in fracking companies and destroying the earth and raping and pillaging Native American monuments, but we put seven seconds of dialogue in an animated children's film about someone's girlfriend that will never be seen on camera. Huh? We're not evil. We're not evil at all. All right, look, we might cater our entire business to a bunch of countries that make being gay illegal, but, you know, look at this. Three seconds of two women holding hands. We're a good company. We might employ fucking 37 million nine-year-olds to sew together Baby Yoda dolls, but, you know, we'll put a rainbow flag on Twitter. That's pretty good, isn't it? It's like... You know what it's like? It's like uh, I reckon Hitler could have got away with the Holocaust if he just promoted gay rights, for sure. (laughs) Yeah, so what? I've got a death camp. Check out my fucking trans flag. I'm flying it hard. Anyway, guys. 
I think we've mined this article for everything that we can. We got to Mike Wazowski suck being built to suck cock, and I think that was a real high point of that part of the podcast, and I think it's time to move on before I get cancelled. Imagine if I got cancelled for saying that Disney is uh, not supporting gay people enough. That'd be great, wouldn't it? What else did I want to talk about here? I've got my fucking notes. What do we have? Oh, yeah, here we are, right? Uh, I'm in the middle of... um, uh, What's the fucking... um, What month is no fap? No fap month. What month is that? No fat. The benefits of no fat. Does it have a month or do you just do it? When is no fat month? No fat November. Oh, okay. Look. I'm a few months late, guys, but I've, I'm, I'm currently three weeks deep in a no-fap February. And i got to say, it's not that hard, right? All you really need to absolutely fucking nail no-fap Feb is get into a motorhome with fucking three other blokes and make sure that there are, even though there's four men in the motorhome, there's only three beds. Zero privacy, okay? No fat February is going fucking well. If you really wanted to nail that month, what you need to do is you need to get your buddies, all of your straight buddies, right? Openly straight characters. You could probably catch them in a Disney film, yeah? Right? And you just need to get into a confined space. And either you're going to nail that month or you're all going to end up fucking each other. And and I'm, I'm proud to report that none of us in the motorhome have fucked each other yet. You know, we got about a week left. It, could, it still could happen. I'm not ruling it out just yet, but I'm feeling pretty confident that I'm going to just nail the whole month. I'm going to nail the month of no nailing. That's what I'm saying. Because, look, I'm going to completely out our tour manager here, Zach, right? He failed. No fat. Feb. And he didn't wank in the motorhome. Okay? We've been staying in caravan parks. The only time we have, we're really the only time I've been naked is when I'm in a communal shower for the whole month. That's the only time I've been completely naked. Every time I'm wearing underwear or shorts, because I'm not going to be walking around nuts out with the boys. Okay, I'll save that for my shows. <laughs> Loosebears.com/gigs. I don't get my dick out. I have an hour of amazing material. But you know, let's see. But also, let's see what happens. Right? Our tour manager, Zach, he's been jacking off in the communal fucking showers. And I've I have never I've never heard a more compelling argument to wear thongs in a shower of a caravan park than seeing than the mental image of my tour manager Zach with his big red beard, just one hand on the wall, the other hand just pumping his cock in the communal bathroom. You know, dude, you know kids use that shit, right? Bro, our, my, my, our video editor, Keelan, didn't, didn't, didn't have thongs for the whole trip. He's been no thonging it, right? Initially, I thought, oh, I'm going to wear thongs because I don't want to get tinnier, right? But now I'm like, I don't want to wear thongs because I don't want to get Zach's cum in between my toes. <laughs> And that's what Keelan has been walking back into the fucking motorhome every shower. Is Zach's cum. It's disgusting and it needs to be fixed. <laughs> Dude, I couldn't, I don't, I, but, I, you know, at the same time as me trashing Zach for, for wanking in a communal shower, I have to respect it because that's confident. You know why I couldn't do that? Because I'm so tall that my head just looks over everybody else's stall. Every single fucking bathroom that we get to, new bathroom every couple of days, every single one of them, the top of the stall is my shoulders, and then it's just my neck and head is above it. Uh, oh, oh. And then? Do you mind? The privacy would be good, okay? Fuck off. 
So if I were to have a wank, right, it would just look like I'm on my toes looking into your shower and jacking off, and who knows what age the person in that stall is going to be. That's gonna. That's an accidental felony for sure. <laughs> you know, kids coming into the fucking bathroom, tour manager Zach's just having a big fat communal pull. Kids are coming in. Kids are coming in the door and kids are coming out of his nuts. It's not a good situation, right? He's turning the whole fucking communal shower into a daycare and it's not on. I lost my wallet as well on tour. Lost my wallet, right? I get about two thirds of the way through on tour. Lost my wallet. And the wallet had all of the cash sales I'd done from merch from this tour. So like a a considerable amount of money that I would be walking away from this tour in the wallet that I lost. We went out after the show. We fucking had dinner. We had a slap on the pokies. And by slap, I don't mean uh, just feeding it hundreds. I mean... I put 10 bucks in for a laugh, lost it all in about 20 seconds and was like, oh, this sucks. Gambling is a scam. I'm never going back. And then I probably won't do that for another six months. That happens every time I go to a pokey room. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll put it in. It might be fun. It is never fun. I've never found it enjoyable. That's one thing that I'm glad I just don't feel the hooks of. You know, some things just get you. You know what I felt the hooks in? Table games, blackjack, blackjack. I feel the hooks. Every time I play blackjack, I feel the hooks going, just put more in, you might win. But it's never, I've never like, I've, I'm proud to say that I've never fed like insane amount of money. I've never lost, stu- I've never even played with lots of money on fucking any kind of gambling, which is good. But I felt the fucking hooks. But not with pokies, man, right? So we go to this pokey room. I feed 10 bucks in. I'm like, oh, that sucked. And then I leave. And we go back to the motorhome. And we drive to the caravan park. And then the next morning, I realize I've lost my wallet. I don't know where the fuck it is. I was wearing shorts in the pokey room. I never wear shorts. A big reason why I wear shorts, right, is because every time you sit down, shit just falls straight out of your fucking pockets. I wear jeans. It stays in my pockets. Now... Could I solve this problem by getting shorts with zip pockets or good pockets? Yes, I could. Could I also solve the problem by just checking every time I stand up? Yes, but I am also at a point where I have, uh, I'm self-aware, right? And a big part of being self-aware is knowing what areas you're a fucking moron. And with me, it is losing shit. I so rarely lose shit anymore and it's not because I've worked out how to remember things it's just what I've just worked out how to like cheat my uh, myself right I've worked out how to cheat cover all of the ways that I'm a fucking idiot I wear I, I wear shit that there's no chance of stuff falling out of my pockets uh I carry all, all of my bags as zips all that kind of shit when I sit down on the train, I fucking hook my arm into the back, the strap of the fucking backpack, so that if I stand up without it, my arm gets caught. I can't forget it. I've Instead of remembering to not lose shit, I've just decided to hack my own dumb brain. But this night it failed. Lost my wallet with hundreds, like, look, with hundreds of dollars in the wallet, which is only the, the second worst part, because... I lost a lot of money in that wallet, but what's even worse is the price of that wallet was more than the amount of cash in there. So I was like a, like a, like a lot of money down, right? I'm like, fuck, this sucks. And then I start to think, well, I should have just put all of the money into the pokey machine. At least then I would have maybe won something instead of definitely lose fucking all of it with not even, not even seeing some flashy lights and ringing bells, you know? Anyway, so next morning I wake up, my wallet's gone. I'm fucking devastated. 
but I also think it's kind of funny because I've trained my brain to not get angry at itself for doing dumb shit because that would just mean I would be angry all the time. So whenever I do a dumb thing, it's funny. But if somebody else does a dumb thing, it makes me mad. But if I do a dumb thing, it's just funny. I'm working on the other thing, but for the moment, it's just left me in this place where I am absolutely faultless and everybody else is the problem. And to be honest, it's a pretty good state of being for only me. Everyone else makes me insufferable, but for just me, pretty fucking stoked. <laughs> right? So anyway, I call the fucking pub. They don't have the wallet. I'm like, oh, it looks like a women's purse. It says Gucci on it. It's got my ID in it, and it also has half of uh, Jeff's ID because for some reason he thought it would be funny to cut it up, and then I took it in my wallet, and I just carry it everywhere with me, and it gives me a good laugh. Right? She's like, no, I don't have it. I'm like, you know what? I don't trust these cunts. I'm fucking going there. Now, it's one thing to like drive with the boys to the pub because you left something there. It's a completely different scenario to be like, hey, guys, I'm an idiot uh, and we need to drive the house because we don't have a car. We need to take the house. Like, oh, so that means that all of you cunts need to get out of bed, get dressed, fold the beds up, turn it back into couches, put your fucking seatbelts on and drive the fucking house 30 minutes down the road to the pub because I'm an idiot. You get nothing from this. In fact, this ruins your day. And also, I've already called ahead and they said that they didn't have it, but we're going anyway. Let's do the most pointless trip of 2020. Let's drive the fucking house to a place that said they don't have my shit just so I can ask them in person and then them go, oh, we don't have it. Let's go, boys, right? So really, I'm bringing a lot of fun and adventure to this trip. I'm the only reason why it's good. We drive all the way to the fucking pub. We get there. Everyone's complaining. Everyone's hating me. Everyone's calling me an idiot. I think it's funny. Because once again, I made the mistake, not somebody else. If somebody else lost my wallet, I'd be fucking fuming. But because I lost it, it's funny. Get to the pub. Sure enough, we look everywhere around the pokey room. It's not there. I'm thinking, you know what? If I found a fucking wallet with like $450 in it, I wouldn't hand it in. If it was in the fucking pokey room, I would, I would, you know what? I would hand it in. I'd hand it straight into the mouth of the pokey machine. And my logic would be, oh, he was going to gamble it anyway. You know, if I win $1,000, I'll put 400 back, tax him 50 bucks for the return, and then I'm 650 up. You know, and I'm a good Samaritan. The guy would probably say thanks. I mean, I definitely wouldn't win, but that would be the logic in the meantime. Anyway, I get there. I look all around. It's not there. I ask the woman. It's not there. I'm like, fuck, it's just gone, right? So now I'm just like, oh, well, I guess I've just lost my wallet and all of the money I've made from merch. Fuck my life. And, of course, everyone that I'm with. Sit down. I'm now starting to get a bit bummed. Reality's sinking in. I'm like, shit, that was like... That sucks. Sold all these t-shirts for fucking nothing. And then I sit down and I come to terms with it and I open up the blind. I've got these blinds behind me, you can see, right? They cover the whole window. I lower it, bam, my wallet's in there. I'm fucking, this is sick. This is the best shit ever. I found my wallet. This is great. I'm cheering. I'm thinking this is great. The boys are going to love this. No one else is celebrating. Come on, guys. This is great. We found my wallet together. Everyone else is just like, no, you're a fucking idiot, and you just wasted our whole day. We had to move the house to find a wallet that you didn't even lose. And you know what it's made me realize, guys? I'm not the problem. I need more supportive friends. <laughs> I'm the problem. I'm a fucking moron. All right. Let's get into the miscellaneous bit of the end. Oh, this table sucks. Do you know, I've, I've been, uh, the way these beds are, I'm so fucking long. Thank God I can stand up in the motorhome. That was a blessing. If I couldn't stand up straight, I reckon this podcast would be so much fucking angrier. But I can stand up straight. That's great, right? I'm not complaining about that. In fact, I'm stoked about that. As much as I've been shitting on this motorhome, it's been pretty fucking good. I mean, it's not Mike Wazowski giving you a blowjob good, but it's, you know, it's up there. Um... But the beds, none of the beds are long enough for me. So I've been, sli I've, not only have I been not 
wanking for a whole month. I've also been sleeping in the fetal position every night. I feel like it's a return to my infancy. All right. So, where are we? Podcast at lewspears.com. If you'd like to send in an email uh, to podcast at lewspears.com, if you have a question, if you need some life advice, um, if you need, uh, if you have a story for me, you'll see. Podcast at lewspears.com. Summarize it in the email. If it's entertaining enough, if I think I can make it good or funny or I can help, I will answer it. Where are we? Um, all right, what do we want here? Um, my mother is in favor of racial segregation. We've got a good one, ladies and gentlemen. This is a great one. Uh, not the mother, the email. Hopefully, I haven't read this one. I just saw the subject line and it's fucking got me. Hopefully, it's not clickbait, guys. All right, so my mother is in favor of racial segregation. Hey, Lou, love your stuff. I've been a Patreon since uh, for a long time. Thank you very much. Love your stuff, blah, blah, blah. I can't wait for Spears vs. America. Me too. Thank you. All right. Context. I'm 19 and I'm living with my mum and dad who are both left-wing hippies, which is awesome for the most part. But my mum, who is much more extreme in her political views than my dad, and I have arguments every now and then. They used to occur on a roughly fortnightly basis and, and that just got extremely ugly. E.g. her calling me a horrid racist and sexist for reading Jordan Peterson's book, 12 Rules, and arguing against the wage gap. Man, I love that book. It's so good. It's so... You know what? It's not even fucking revolutionary. It's just a self-help book. It's not like the... It's just a good self-help book. It just says the same shit that all of the other books help, which say, which is just personal responsibility, look after yourself, and that way you can make the world better. That's all it says. There's no fucking giant revelations about anything really big. It's all about just you and how you can make yourself better, which makes the world better. That's it. I don't know what the fucking fuss about that book was. Um, this was and is obviously not good for my mental health, as I already struggled with that stuff at the best of times. Here's the main issue. I was talking and laughing with my dad about this video of a stupid university student saying that white people aren't allowed in this multicultural space in the uni, which is just segregation 2.0. But then my mum walks in and says, well, these people need a safe space to be in. Oh, she's in favour of, of like racial segregation in a uh, quotation good way. I get it. Uh, I reply, a safe space from what? white people she then replies with yes and goes on to talk about how me being against racial segregation is a form of white privilege where i cut her off and say quite angrily mum this is literally racial segregation you're arguing for racial segregation she ignores me and starts going off about safe spaces and shit like that i just leave and go to my room what the fuck do i do i don't want to i don't want to go back to like it was i already try my best to completely avoid politics with my mum because it makes the house feel like a silent battlefield do i just continue biting my tongue even though it stresses me out i can't think of anything else i can do since i'm currently unemployed and i can't afford to move out thanks in advance uh drew yeah drew okay you got to get a job all right you're 17 stop being a piece of shit get a fucking job dude oh you're 19 oh you're 19 dude get a fucking job you loser Go work in a call center. When I was a job, I had already had a job for uh, 14 and 9 months, 18. Like, fucking, by the time I was your age, I had a job for, like, five, six, five years. You ain't got no job? Go out there and work, dude. Get some life experience. Get some fucking money in your pocket. Maybe get some pussy. Huh? Yeah, look, okay. Obviously, this racial segregation shit is fucking bullshit, even if it comes from uh, oppressed people. I think that every fucking uh, group, uh, race or whatever, religion, belief system, should be able to have their own groups. Uh, but those should be in, like, private things, not in fucking, like, 
public university spaces? I don't know. It's such a hard one because, like, I understand uh, if a bunch of – if a group or a race – has unique struggles that other races don't, a support group can be really helpful for that. And I think that that support group should probably only be attended by people of that group, you know? Like uh, Alcoholics Anonymous is a great example of that. Like you don't want fucking, I don't know, someone who's in a wheelchair going to Alcoholics Anonymous and talking about how much their disability sucks. You know, that's a different problem no one's getting help. In fact, talking about that problem in this environment just hurts both parties. Nothing's getting solved. So I think that, like, it's definitely a hard one. I don't think that 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 in, a like, a public university-type space there should be, like, black-only areas or, or white-only areas or Asian-only areas. But I understand if there was, like, a group of people talking about... Uh, problems faced by say say for example you know problems asian people who want to talk about racism or experiencing racism or ex- or experiencing the problems that only asian people new to a country would experience right it's unique to them i understand them having a group that's like however often it is once a week a couple times a week i understand them having maybe a room for a few hours and hey man this is just for the fucking the asian people for just two hours. I get that. But I think, yeah, having like a, a, a black only space that's permanent and only black people can go here or only white people can go there or only Asian people can go here. I think that's fucking silly. I think that's counterproductive and that doesn't make any sense. Um, and yeah, that just is back to fucking racial segregation for different reasons, which, you know, for whatever reason it's for, it's the same result. It just polarizes and divides people and makes uh, other the enemy, you know? But in terms of uh, your problem, which is talking about this shit at home, I would say uh, you need to get a job so that, even just so that if you do have a big fight, you can just jump in your car and go to the movies or, or whatever, you know, go hang out with your friends and go out, go to get some food or something. If you have no money, you have no freedom. So that would be good for you. If you have a big fucking blow up, you can just leave the house. Worst case scenario, get a hotel room for the night. I don't know how bad it is. It doesn't sound that bad, but you know what I'm saying? If you did, if you don't have a job and it does get that bad, you don't have the freedom to do that. You're stuck and fucked. Or you got to be that friend. Oh, I have had a fight with mummy. Can I sleep on your couch? You, you don't want to be that gun. So get a job, right? That's what you need to do. And get any job. If you're fucking 18, 19 and you're not in uni, or even if you, even if you are in uni, get any job, all right? Yes, they all suck. They're all not fun, but they give you money. And as, if you use that money wisely and you use your free time properly, you can escape that job and either pursue a passion or learn a trade, uh, get a degree and do what you actually want to do. All jobs suck until you work to get a good one. Um, and uh, you know what? I guess, you know what would be good? Obviously, you, her, and your dad have strong opinions about things, uh, but you suck at communicating those opinions, and you think that the other person is so wrong in a way that makes you angry. So perhaps it's not a fucking opinion problem, it's a communication problem. So either you need to talk to your mum about how you can talk about these issues, maybe you need a safe word, right? I know you're not fucking her, but it can still be useful. Maybe if you start, I know uh, in my family, there's not, not like mum and dad, but in like extended family there's one unit where one person in that group of people is like your mum but on more on the right side of things and they have arguments with their kids so often and their children and the mum is so strong and so strong-headed and so correct in their mind that they don't convince anyone so they worked out whenever they start arguing and if it gets too fucking heated one of them just yells pineapple and they just stop that shit works, you know? That's not just for fucking, oops, I spanked my girlfriend a bit too hard. That shit also works for conversations. 
Um, so maybe give that a go. I think you need a you you either need to talk to your mum about how you can talk about these things, and then try a safe word or try and be like, hey, I know we disagree on a lot of things, but I would rather us be able to talk about them in a calm manner because at the moment, I don't know if you've noticed that that you know you do this. And point out your own flaws as well. Don't just talk about your mum's problem because that'll just cause another fight. Just say, I've noticed that whenever we talk about things we disagree with, I fuck up by doing these things and I'm really sorry about that. But I also think that you make it hard because you do these things. And do you think that we could probably try and solve these issues and maybe talk like adults? I'm 19 now. I'm an adult even though I have no fucking job, right? I think we can talk like, like adults. Try that. And then... You know, maybe chuck a safe word in there. And if that doesn't work, if the trying to improve your conversation health and having a fucking safe word in there doesn't help, just stop talking about it. You don't have to talk about it, do you? Just avoid it. If it makes your life hell and it makes it feel like a battleground, either you need to stop talking about it or you need to get a job and move out so you can live, live a life without that over your head. Some people just aren't meant to live together. Some people just aren't meant to talk about certain topics. Clearly, neither of you are convincing the other person. So you either need to work out how to talk to each other in a more healthy way or stop talking about that shit. All right? That's it. I'm going to end the podcast there. Sorry, I didn't have time for another fucking email. I am so hot in the back of this RV. Um, but thank you for listening. Support me on Patreon. You get access to episodes early um, and also a bunch of exclusive content and all my videos early and everything. And it really, really helps uh, pay all of the people uh, that help pump out this content. And me. That would be nice, you know. I... Um, it, it, Keelan desperately needs a pair of thongs, all right? He's got cum in between his toes. We need the help. Patreon.com. Check it out. Search my name on there. All right? Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you next Sunday. The next episode might be in an RV or it might be in uh, the studio. I don't really know yet. I land on Saturday night, so it depends what the fuck I'm doing. All right? Thanks for listening. I've been Lewis Spears. Uh, have a shit one. <laughs>